and I see them snuggled oh. up together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and um, she's saying she's named after old movies. Do you and your husband like old oh. kind of black and white movies? Well, she <laughs> she does have an old timey name. Her name is Stella, but sh she sort of came with that name. Mm -hmm. So maybe the people who had her ahead of time, because we, we got her from a rescue. Yeah, and uh, she's your healing dog. So she's the one that comes over and sits on your lap when you're not feeling very good. Yep. She also, I know your mom doesn't live with you. Right. That's what she's telling me, but she says she helps your mom. And when you're on the phone with your mom, wow. she's definitely there. <laughs> um, this little one, he's more your protector dog. Yeah. So he's very attached to you and your energy. <laughs> and this one here, uh, Eddie, well, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I asked Eddie, what's your favorite tree? And he says, well, Ashley's house is very healthy. <laughs> so there's not a lot of dog treats, but <laughs> he, wishes he, he wishes it was at Kristen's house because Chris, <laughs> Kristen cooks some yummy uh, doggy leftovers. And these guys were talking this morning. And so I think the yummy leftovers are probably at your house. Uh, this little guy, he likes a lot of attention, but he doesn't like his nails cunning. True. And he doesn't like the wet. Um, Hates it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and his girlfriend, too, she likes to be pampered. They, they love a lot of attention. They actually pick up on people's energy. Hmm. And so, you know, if you're not feeling well, sometimes you'll notice that your dog's a little bit off. Uh, this guy, Eddie, is pretty healthy, but sometimes he gets tummy issues. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, he gets yeah. into the trash sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's where you get your problems sometimes. You're pretty healthy, but sometimes when you get a little stressed, it's kind of in this area. Maybe, mm. and yeah. yeah, picks that up. So they do. They pick up on our energy, and you have to be, you know, kind of careful. Give them a lot of fresh water if they're not feeling very good to flush that out. So you think that we all can learn somehow to do what you do and communicate with our pets and in, in in a way that we don't think we can. Well, we're already c communicating. I, mean, I think a lot of uh, pet owners will say, oh, I kind of know what they're thinking. I know when they want to go out. Mm -hmm. And it's like we are talking all the time to them, but we can't hear them as well. And we have to learn to just kind of quiet in our mind. And, and just a lot of times I tell my students, just to say the first thing that pops into your head, just to kind of make it up. A lot of times we get it, but we just don't believe it. Hmm. And um, sometimes pet owners will say, well, why, why does my dog do this or my cat do this? And you have to be careful that what you're projecting is what you want them to do. Because sometimes we're telling them to do one thing, but they actually read our thoughts and emotions more than our actual words. So we hmm. could be saying, um, you know, uh, we, we don't want them to do something. And so we kind of got that in our mind. And so they'll say, well, that's what they're telling me to do. So if someone yeah. is sitting at home right now and their pet mm -hmm. is on the couch next to them, where do they begin? Do they begin with just simply quieting and listening and, and trusting? I, in my book, I do a lot of exercises just to have people trust. And when I do my workshops, I have them share photographs with other people, with animals that they don't know. And I get them to be confident with animals they don't know. Because with your own animals, it's hmm. a lot more difficult because you kind of know, yeah. oh, well, I imagine that he would say that. Yeah. You know, so you think you're making it up and it's hard to know. So I tell them to you know, learn how to, how to work on other people's animals so that they can trust. And once you open up and you start doing this, it, it opens up kind of a whole other world for you. So, you know, you, you, you sense maybe your relatives around you sometimes. It's all from the same place. So once you kind of learn to quiet your mind and do that, you get messages from the other side, from, from people as well. Because animals, they do go over the other side. They are often around our, our relatives. Uh, your nana, your mom's mom, okay. is around a lot, around, oh, really? around this little one. So, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I never knew her, so that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, and they do. They see it. So sometimes you'll have your animals uh, they look like they're looking at uh -huh. somebody or uh, look like they're playing and sometimes it's with another animal. Uh, you have a little, uh, another little dog in spirit, a little boy dog that yep. you lost yes. and that one's around. So sometimes he comes around and they see, they see him and they play with him. It's going to make me oh. cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's actually, you know, when you, ca when you do animal communication, you start to realize that, you know, they really are around us. They do stay with us and sometimes they actually come back. Oh. They actually can even reincarnate in our life, which, oh, wow. you know, is a pretty wild thought. Well, thank you. I'm going to let you toss the break. <laughs> okay. Well, we're uh, next at 7.30. we got Governor Pat McCrory. He's got two bills, unemployment and Medicaid, sitting on his desk. It'll affect millions of people. We've got lots more coming up right after the break. Stay with us.